name's Craig. I live north of uh, Pittsburgh. What does it take for a meal to fill you up? That's pretty important, you know, for people, whether you're trying to lose weight or just be, be more mindful how much you're eating. You've been on this lifestyle now for uh, a while. Why don't you just briefly tell us, you know, how long and, and how you got here? I watched uh, Forks Over Knives and probably a few other videos. I've been doing research for a while for health reasons because I was not going to have any insurance. And I, I was just getting to that point um, in my 50s where different things were going on. I had high cholesterol, borderline high blood pressure, which now would have been full high blood pressure because they changed the guidelines, and, uh, and high cholesterol. And so, you know, I'd looked into some things and, and so I had decided to make the change. It was just one of those things that, honestly, I didn't think I thought about it as much. It's funny because paradoxically, I watched probably a hundred YouTube videos at least. And yet at the same time, when I did it, actually kind of started to change. It wasn't like I said, okay, today I'm going to do it. It was one of those things I think I, I just said, well, when I go to lunch today, I'm gonna to try something vegetarian. And I did the classic thing where you go to, like it was actually Jimmy John's, that, of all places. That's where you go for vegetarian food, you know? <laughs> so I get some vegetarian stuff. So I have this vegetarian stuff and I think, boy, why does vegetarian get such a bad rap? This is like great. Well, yeah, look at it. It's slathered in like a half an inch of cheese and a ton of mayonnaise. So afterwards I realized how stupid I was being and I looked up the nutrition. It was higher calories in fat than the meat ones. Wow. <laughs> it was even worse. Mm -hmm. So I thought, yeah, maybe that's not such a good idea. So it's funny because I could have just said, well, maybe I should, maybe I should be a, an intelligent vegetarian and just don't do stupid things like that. But instead, I just thought, eh, maybe I should just do vegan and <laughs> call it good. Which is funny because I came from uh, Wisconsin, butter, milk, cream, you know, so I was raised up with all that stuff. My mother used to have the, the jar of lard, you know, which lots of people had. And, you know, this jar, this mason jar of lard with uh, like aluminum foil over it. And like, so she'd go to make anything. And uh, you know, you get the bacon going, you know, and you get the good, oh, ooh, there's a bunch of good grease. <laughs> I'm trying to put that back in the large jar. <laughs> but I don't know, strangely enough, I don't know, I didn't find it to be terribly difficult. I have to say, I don't crave dairy. I mean, the one place where I use it is I use a, like an oat creamer in tea. And I would use that in, in coffee. But I don't crave it, you know. What are some of those health wins that you realized? Well, everything, everything got better. I mean, I can't remember the timing of when I did blood work, but it wasn't too long. I'm going to be six months or somewhere in there. And yeah, blood pressure was down. Uh, oh, I was getting prediabetes, so that, that improved. Uh, cholesterol improved enough that I went off statin. Um, obviously, I didn't have to go on to uh, blood pressure medication. And, uh, you know, certainly you, you lose weight. Um, I think psychologically, anything that makes you realize that you kind of, I just had a bad habit of, uh, for a lot of complicated reasons, of living in a certain haze, a certain daze. And I think anything that you do where you take control of something and say, I gotta do something different, you know, I'm not gonna keep doing this. You, it just automatically, I think, makes your life better. Um, you just you get a certain level of awareness. I don't know I don't know what that is, but it makes you it makes you more likely to do other things that you need to do. Maybe the other things that you need to do maybe are be more social or be more connected, whatever. And and sometimes you need to do something like that. It's a step that makes your brain work a little differently. Mm. Yes. And you've been doing this now for how long? This like I think seven and a half, I think seven and a half years. Mm -hmm. What are some other positive changes you made after making the changes to your diet, lifestyle-wise, like you mentioned, as far as social and fitness? Exercise. I mean, that has been the biggest one. I think it started with yoga, really. And <clears throat> yoga was funny because um, one of the things I learned in yoga that is a stunning, bizarre thing to learn in your 50s is that I hold my breath. And... Uh, and after I realized that, and of course yoga, because it's, you know, it's so based on breathing, moving, breathing, moving, breathing, which I still have trouble synchronizing that, but I sometimes I, I get it right. Um, 
so you, you, you have to become more aware of your breathing. And so when I started to realize that I was holding my breath, you start to wonder, why? Why are you holding your breath? And it dawned on me that when I was a kid and my mother was a nurse, she worked crazy hours. So she would come home from being up all night in the middle of the day, and then you, know, you don't know when she was coming and going that she had this part-time nursing job, it was nuts. So she would have to come home and she might sleep three hours. Well, we had to be quiet. And so I learned to hold my breath as part of not making noise, you know? So really weird, really weird. And that gets in your brain, let me tell you. So yoga was part of that whole awareness thing. And then, and then uh, I, I think yoga, another interesting thing about yoga is, I think it makes you less likely to injure yourself because people like, I have, I'm very somehow divorced from my body, you know, it's really strange. And so when you're divorced from your body and you don't feel things like you should, you're more likely to hurt yourself because you're, you'll do something stupid and you just won't feel it until it's too late and you've injured yourself. So yoga sort of made me feel things and you you're like, because yeah, you're gradually stretching, you start, you feel your joints doing things different or balancing, you know, you, you feel things moving around and compensating as you as you adjust your balance. So that was huge. And then it was kind of lucky, I think, that I did yoga first, and then I got more into traditional exercise classes because I think the yoga gave me a foundation for that. And then, and then as I started doing, you know, the more traditional exercise classes, then my blood work got a lot better again. So then my doctor just said, hey, whatever you're doing, keep doing it, because it is totally working. Keep doing it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's great. And now you had told us when you came here that you're not much of a cook at home. You do make a lot of your meals, but you do like simple hacks to keep it easy, right? Is that partly what led you to this retreat or what was your, your reason for choosing this particular type of retreat? I think some of my blood work is still not that great. Mm -hmm. Triglycerides was one that I was, I've was i become more aware of recently. I think I just randomly ran across some information about triglycerides and about 10 lines are pretty high. But I eat, you know, I eat frozen Trader Joe's on trays a lot, you know, and that's not the best thing to do. It's okay, but it's not the best thing to do. But just common sense, you're retired, you have time, cook. Everybody should know how to cook. So that, that, was, that was important. And so you think the retreat helped you just a little bit going home? Or no? I think some of these things are like osmosis. By being around it, your brain just kind of normalizes it over time. And sometimes, you know, sometimes it's not a very explicit thing. It's not like, I saw this, now I'm going to do this. It's more like a little nudge along the way. So I don't know, I don't know what I'll do, but I think I'll, I think I'll, I will do something. I think the other thing is that I live in an area that doesn't have a lot of plant-based restaurants. It doesn't have a lot of people that uh, that do it. In fact, I only know like two. And uh, so sometimes it's nice to be with like-minded people. Mm -hmm. That kind of boosts you, so to speak. Is that your favorite part of the week? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Anything else to comment on about the week and your experience here? I just like enjoy the it's 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 camaraderie. I think people are becoming very isolated, and uh, and when you get isolated, you for some bizarre reason there's something about our our personas that makes you look at people's differences instead of the similarities. Mm -hmm. And when you when you like if you look at the people here, I mean the one thing we have in common was just a, this interest in making a change. But other than that kind of a random, you know, group of people. So the fact that random people can, can get together and have a pretty nice bond and, and, and commonality shows you that that's out there. In fact, it's normal. It is. And unfortunately, it's become abnormal and we need to fix that. <laughs> no, but we'll, t I mean, people are somewhat curious about it. So, you know, I will, I will talk about it, but I definitely, you know, it's definitely better to say a few things and let them ask if they're curious, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. Well, thanks again for being here. We thoroughly enjoyed your presence here. Any Homer Simpson quote you would like to leave us with? 
Well, it's maybe not an appropriate one, but it, but it does kind of set the tone. Homer says that trying is the first step towards failing. Uh, well, you gotta you gotta learn from your failures. Right? Well, sometimes again, you have to laugh at the comically stupid. You know, because if you think about switching your diet, that's one of the fears that people have. Is I am afraid to do something because I might fail. So sometimes you should say to yourself, you know what? Trying is the first step towards failing because it's that stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not gonna hurt you to try one meal. Right. Try one side dish of a meal or try anything. See what happens? Yeah.